Welcome to Capacity TV. Today we have Andrew Kwok, SVP International Business and Ravi Mahalingam, VP EMEA at HGC. Andrew, Ravi, welcome. Hi Kevin. Andrew, why has HGC made the investments and taken the steps to provide capacity from Asia to Africa? I think throughout all this year, we've been, uh, we have achieved uh, some success in Asia and we have expanded the US. And other than that, we see our customer requirement uh, is pushing us to go global. So that's why last year, as I mentioned, we established our EMEA, Europe, Middle East and Africa headquarters in London, yes. headed by Ravi, my colleague, sitting here. So mainly to answer your question is that it is a market drive mm -hmm. and our customers drive. And we do believe uh, strongly that we can replicate some of our experience and some of our small success in Asia and replicate it in Africa. The reason behind, one of the reasons behind is also that uh, when I compare Africa and also Asia, Africa is connected through a big piece of inland. Asia is connected through a big piece of ocean. Mm -hmm. We all have the more or less the same kind of challenge and there must be something we can replicate from Asia to Africa. Ravi, was the expansion into Africa part of a long-term strategy for HGC? Of course, I think we are here for the long term. Uh, as how we have uh, successfully created a very, very successful model with the carrier and also with our enterprise customers in Asia. We are trying to also bring that set of uh, SLAs and skill set and the expertise uh, together with the portfolio of services which we feel that are the needs of the carriers and also enterprise customers uh, in this part of the world. So, so we are in it for the long haul. Uh, is what I would say. And uh, as we see the trend, uh, I think the African carriers are actually leapfrogging um, directly into the uh, new space or the next generation services. So we have prepared in terms of network connectivity, in terms of solutions, and also bringing that set of customization that is, uh, there is a, 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 how would I say, a, a kind of a unique proposition to make it more uh, diverse in terms of our solution and yet focusing on, on exactly what they are looking for would be uh, the kind of service we are interested to, to deliver. In keeping with that, what do you believe will be Africa's next stage of international and telecoms development? I can see that the internet is still the biggest driving force, but among the internet, there will be a lot of diversification. Uh, just like, for example, our experience in Asia, instead of only providing the internet, the market and also our business partner is actually pushing us to do a lot of highly differentiated applications and services. I can see that this will also repeat itself in Africa. So the driver of the next phase is riding on the internet. And, but on the other hand, there will be a lot of different specific requirements in which that is what Ravi has mentioned, that we are going to tailor-made, we are going to do highly differentiated business model with the player here. Does that tie in with the strategy to establish a CDN service in the African region? Firstly, um, in terms of, if I were to take a step back, in terms of managing the content, this is an area that we, are, we look at it as a future, as an important area to invest in. So we are actually um, working with um, uh, content generators bringing the content from one region to the other. Recently, we had some success in bringing contents from Asia into the European market, which is of need to not only the European market, but also Africa, because the cable systems all come to Paris and in the UK. Yeah. So we are inching towards bringing this uh, content. And in, in this conference, we actually had a deep interest, uh, especially for those who are involved in managing content at uh, IPTV level at wholesale level to acquire this content. So caching and also content distribution we, is, will become an important component and we are inching towards that. And we hope that in, in maybe about six to 18 months time, we should have some form of a network that would be able to terminate those content directly uh, into the uh, African market in major cities. Andrew, we learned of your recent announcement and of your partnership with WhatsApp. Can you give us a brief outline of what this means for your company? So basically, a cooperation with WhatsApp in our mobile network in Hong Kong will give our customer a special treatment 
no matter on the commercial and also on the technical point of view, to let them enjoy WhatsApp in our local network in Hong Kong with a very, very reasonable charges. And more to that, we also allow them to use WhatsApp when they're traveling around the world with a flat fee. And no matter how much is the traffic volume uh, they use, we're going to only charge for one fee. So this is our latest cooperation with WhatsApp. Hutchison is the first carrier in the world who has this kind of cooperation with WhatsApp. Andrew, Ravi, thanks for your time. Thanks. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure.